Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootlicker shields, deathly shirts, peasants, vassals, minions, meat sacks, blamers. I'm useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, let's go to the not so good old USA, or the good old USA, depending on which side of the fence you fall on. And uh, I wanted to look at some of the things that Trump administration is going to inherit, because this always becomes a point of contention. Um, there's been a lot of conversations lately that uh, have said that uh, there's a need for this video. One, of course, is the fact that each successive uh, administration that comes in historically uh, blames the last administration for all kinds of problems they inherit. And uh, we see this a lot. And unfortunately, it gets very uh, uh, complex and very hard to uh, navigate through because, for example, when Bush left office, he left a, a bunch of bailouts and wars and everything else to Obama and a lot of baked in uh, costs, a lot of spending that was already uh, uh, baked in the cake. So when Obama came into office, uh, legitimately, uh, he had a right to uh, complain about a lot of things that he inherited. But unfortunately, what happens is, is the a lot of that uh, shit uh, floats to the surface, the turds float to the surface after Obama uh, takes office and then he gets to take the blame. So a lot of the spending uh, that Obama did initially in the administration, of course, was uh, uh, spending that he was obligated to follow through because of Bush programs. So let's make that clear. And also the fact that a lot of people get confused, like who did the bailouts and who didn't and the like. For me, it doesn't really matter because the fact is that Bush did a bunch of the bailouts and no bankers went to jail. And then when Obama took in, got into office, uh, the bailouts continued and no bankers went to jail. So to me, it's just one big long thing. But the blame game is a big topic uh, every election. And I know a lot of a lot of conservatives uh, bristled at, at Obama and the liberal base complaining about all the uh, shit that they got uh, stuck with uh, by the Bush administration. And, but at the same token, uh, the Bush administration, of course, uh, had a lot to complain about inheriting a lot of things from the Clinton administration. So it just goes, just like all the uh, uh, party line drone horse shit in this fake left-right paradigm, it just goes back and forth and they blame each other. So that's part of the quotient. But uh, the other part of the quotient is just uh, the, uh, uh, and it has also has to do with the party line drone ideas. The the fact that people are just uh, are are against a, a lot of things just because it's a Democrat, or against a lot of things just because it's a Republican. Good examples on Facebook recently. I saw uh, one of my old friends complaining about the fact that God, the way uh, Trump is going to spend, he's going to add a trillion dollars to the debt uh, in this first year for the infrastructure projects and things like that. And it's like that's really. Uh, incredibly hypocritical to talk about considering the trillions and trillions that uh, Obama had to the national debt in the last eight years and he has the record for that where uh, up to 20 trillion dollars now what you know so now somebody's upset after eight years that uh, there's gonna be a trillion dollars more so that's pretty hypocritical and disingenuous and um, and also the the fact is that uh, there's there is a whole pile of stuff that's being passed on to Trump and unfortunately it could be a situation where a lot of this stuff um, explodes uh, during the Trump administration. And, and not only is he going to have to deal with it, but of course he'll get blamed for it. He, uh, Obama won't have to accept the responsibility for some of the stuff that he passes on and inherits. So the blame game will continue to go on. But uh, let's look at some of the stuff he's going to inherit that's going to be a problem. Well, first of all, the Afghan war that Obama promised to get us out of, uh, we're still there. In fact, there's a surge, so we have a lot of troops there and, and personally I feel like they're going to be there forever but uh, Trump is inheriting the war in Afghanistan the longest war in US history and uh, he's also inheriting the Syrian quagmire right now it looks like uh, he's not going to really get involved too much further in Syria um, but uh, who knows because it's a, uh, obviously an ongoing situation and uh, so he's inherited that and then of course he's inherited the war against ISIS in Iraq which is a continuing Mess. So after um, ten, uh, eight years of, uh, of uh, Obama and eight years of Bush, um, he's going to have to deal with Iraq as well. And so he'll have a lot of sorting out to do there. And once again, those are going to be some baked in costs that he's going to have to uh, deal with. The cost of the Afghan war, which has been astronomical. The cost of our intervention in Syria, which is astronomical. And our intervention in Iraq, which is uh, uh, going to continue to be a boondoggle and a, and a money hole. And uh, let's remember Barack Obama, the two, two uh, terms of his administration is the, the longest continuous uh, president at war. And uh, so 
Trump is going to inherit that. We'll see what he has to uh, do there. And of course, uh, now people are already bristling at the fact that uh, Trump is inheriting a lot of these uh, surveillance and war laws that Bush created that uh, uh, Obama expanded on. And now it's funny to hear everybody complain about the fact that Trump's going to have these powers. And I remember when Bush uh, instigated those powers and presidents before him as well. I don't want to single him out. But, uh, you know, they forget that the, the next administration is going to get these powers and they may not like who's going to get into power. Maybe the Republicans assumed uh, Republicans would continue to win and they wouldn't have to worry about it when they gave Bush, Bush all those powers. And, of course, the uh, uh, liberals uh, didn't think about the fact that uh, the, the uh, mantle would be put, uh, passed on to someone like Trump. Uh, of course, they assumed Hillary would be in power and they don't have any problem with her having all these war and surveillance uh, uh, powers, which he was more than eager to use. And uh, so we have this vast surveillance system uh, and police, militarized police that uh, uh, Trump will inherit. And apparently Trump doesn't have any problem with the militarization of the police, but uh, I do. So uh, that's something I, I don't like. Um, but he's going to have this authorization that uh, Bush and Obama created where he can bomb and kill and drone anyone in any country in the world uh, with previous authorization uh, under the uh, uh, law created under the Bush administration. So, so we're going to see a lot of that, a lot of things that uh, got powers that got passed on, including the use of executive orders now, 175 executive orders, I believe, during the uh, Obama administration. And uh, so those are pretty, those same kind of executive powers that uh, uh, everyone used to complain about Bush. And then uh, Obama said he wasn't going to use them, and then he used them all the time. And uh, I suspect Trump will be the same. He's already uh, using these executive orders. And, then, of course, that circumvents the Constitution. That's a problem uh, that we should be complaining about with all presidents, that uh, we can be uh, in war zones and have uh, uh, combat operations in countries all over the world. And there's no oversight by Congress. And, uh, and then we have the global war operations. We have a, 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 something like 90 countries that had U.S. Special Forces under Bush. We have 130 plus countries that have Special Forces in them under Obama. And now Trump will inherit uh, the fact that we have Special Forces troops and, uh, in 130 countries. And we have uh, over 1,000 military bases spread around the globe. So uh, he has talked about the idea of being uh, more of a non-interventionist and maybe not having Special Operations all over the world. But the reality will settle in quick. And, uh, and then the 1,000 bases uh, would behoove us to, to uh, maybe close down a lot of these bases, and Trump has intimated that, but we'll see what happens there, too. Once again, the reality could set in. And then he's going to deal with the, the fact that uh, we have a, a, an auto industry that, uh, even though it's claimed that there's a recovery, uh, there's a vast uh, uh, problem with subprime loans that have been given, and there's an um, uh, accelerating uh, default rate. So there's going to be a lot of uh, problems, for perhaps, in the auto industry that uh, Trump's going to inherit that he's not really talking about right now. And um, and also, let's remember that all of these uh, auto loans are, uh, have been uh, turned into asset-backed securities and sold as well, so that could be a problem. And the same thing with student loans. We have a huge student loan problem now. Uh, let's see, student loan is now over a trillion dollars, uh, uh, more like a trillion, uh, let's see, 1.28 trillion uh, student loans. and uh, once again, it turns out that recently it was revealed that uh, the, the default rate is about 50%. It's much higher than thought. There's a lot of students out there that haven't paid a dime for seven years. And uh, once again, those are also... So not only is the student loan issue going to be a problem, especially because the government is financing all the student loans now, the same way that we have the government, Freddie and Fannie, that's uh, financing the, the, the all the mortgages now. So those are going to be problems because... Uh, not all. Not only are all those things rolled into asset-backed securities and sold around the world, but uh, huge default rates and and a lot of potential for this to explode in the next four years. Uh, let's see. We also have, well, I, I, as I already mentioned, 1.14 trillion dollars in auto loans out there, and a lot of those are going bad. We have 8.8 uh, uh, 8.8 8 .8 trillion dollars in mortgages out there, and uh, once again, we have a fair amount of of subprime activity going on out there again. Uh, a lot of what uh, could, uh, made the last uh, financial collapse and we could have that uh, similar problem again. Uh, and then uh, we also have the uh, banks. Uh, the banks uh, theoretically are doing well right now but as I've mentioned in a lot of my videos if you actually get into the real numbers and whatnot I'm 
we could have some problems and not to mention the fact that uh, banks are, uh, are probably going to be treated very well under the Bush administration especially now that uh, after railing against the banks all during his campaign uh, now he uh, has several Goldman Sachs bankers in there but uh, like I say I don't want to necessarily make a judgment about those appointments uh, although it rubs me the wrong way uh, we'll see what happens and uh, and let's see I met, as I mentioned about mortgages uh, there's one trillion dollars in bonds uh, backed by mortgages so, so that's a like I say since a lot of those are subprime now uh, there's potential for uh, that industry to blow up again and uh, non non banking firms have a bigger share uh, of FHA loans which is continue to be a problem as well so uh, so those are some of the big things that uh, Trump's going to inherit um, the the economy of course is much fra more fragile than people realize you know this fake recovery that everyone talks about and certainly there's a some ways that the, the economy has recovered but uh, there's a lot of fallacy there for example uh, Trump knows that the uh, the, the uh, unemployment numbers that we use are fake and so even though the Obama administration can talk about a four per five percent unemployment rate now the actual rate if you look at the labor partition participation rate and all kinds of other uh, uh, measures uh, the, the unemployment rate is actually uh, anywhere between 10 and 25 percent it's really hard to tell um, there's so many people that have dropped off the uh, the rolls so let's remember that if you uh, are unemployed and you stop looking for work you're not counted anymore and there was a great uh, percentage of people that were like that during uh, the, the last administration uh, just falling off the books so uh, so we'll see. Uh, those are some of the things that you'll inherit. Let's see. Can I think of anything else right off the bat uh, outside of my notes? Um, well, not right now. Let's just wrap this up and call it good. And uh, I'm sure my uh, very intelligent uh, base out there that watches my videos will can fill in some of the things that he'll inherit uh, down in the comments below. I'm useful idiot. Don't you be one too?